Hello and welcome to Car Dealer Live. We're talking used cars once again and used car prices. And today joining me is Cap HPI's Director of Valuation, Darren Martin. Darren, how are you? Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, I'm well, James. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks ever so much for joining us and giving us the latest on the used car market. Let's dive straight in then. We've, um, we had some heavy falls, didn't we, at the back end of last year? The last quarter was quite painful for car dealers. What's happening in the market now? Uh, well, I'm glad to report it's been a recovery. Uh, we've seen um, yeah, some strength in the market, definitely. We had 10.5% drop in those three months last year. Saw a little bit of the first, I guess, green shoots in December, which because it wasn't as bad as the previous two months. Um, there were some dealers out there buying at that point, uh, more dealers out buying than, uh, than maybe there had been, uh, stocking up for the hope, the, the hope of a, an uplift in January. And yeah, the retailers are all pretty buoyant. There's um, been some some consumer activity, plenty of cars being um, being bought and, and sold. So yeah, it's it's good. And the headline figure is a, a negligible um, 0.1% drop. So 0.1%. Uh, 0.1%. Yeah. Yeah. So which is like less than a hundred pounds. So at the start of the month, uh, we we were sort of heading towards, so it was a sort of half a percent drop at that point in time. Looked like we were going to head for maybe a 1% drop, which again would have been, would have been good. But at that point around the 10th, 11th, it reversed. And, um, and if we'd had another couple of days of uh, valuing in our live product, it would have probably turned to positive. So yeah, it's, um, wow. yeah, it's good. I'm very surprised at that, actually. It's and it's very, very positive news. Nice, nice to hear um, that those values have, have firmed up. So, a not not point one percent. How does that compare to other Januaries? So, yeah, it's about in line, really. So, we've had uh, the average over the twelve years since we've had Cap Live has been um, is not point three percent down. So, we're more or less in line with that. We've had a, a, a couple of times where it's gone up, but that is quite unusual. Um, a couple of times where it's gone by more than that, but generally that's that I would say that's in line with with the average. It's the year tends to take a little bit of a while to get going, and you can get more strength during February than January. So um, yeah, that 0.1% is is in line. And uh, if you look at the detail of it, petrol and diesel cars particularly have been uh, been performing well in there. So it's good. Have they? The um, so is this a uh, a result of dealers getting out there and buying again uh, and for for stocking up, or is it a combination of, of that and consumers coming back to the market? It's it's both. So if you speak to the dealers, they're not like throwing superlatives around, but they're saying it's been good, it's been better than okay. Um, so they're pleasantly surprised with with how it's going. And obviously, then there's a requirement to to buy cars. There was a bit of trepidation about buying at the back end of last year because of those big drops that, that were happening and there were there were wholesalers that were selling cars very cheaply. Um it seems like they've put their prices up. A lot of the a lot of the wholesalers have the auctions are doing well. So yeah, consumer activity, certainly from around that first weekend, the sort of the sixth, seventh of, of January, that it picked up then. Um not that it was bad before that, but it has certainly improved by then. So that yeah, the dealers are back out there buying and um and finding they're having to pay more for cars than they would have done if they'd bought in January, uh, sorry, in December. Did this come as a bit of a surprise to you or not? I think everybody was hoping it would be it would be good in January. Um, it's so it's not a surprise that it's good. I think we all thought, yeah, well, there's no reason why January won't be good. Obviously, interest rates are high, but um, cons consumers sort of held off at the back end of last year, and there tends to be an uptick as you as you move into the new year. What has taken us by surprise? We were forecasting a value drop again of somewhere around one percent, slightly more than one percent because we thought there was a lot of cars still swilling around. There'd be OEM activity at the back end of last year. There'd be pre-reg. Um, so basically supply outweighing demand. So the strength of it has taken us a little bit by surprise. It's better than better than we thought, better than we'd hoped for. Um, so that's good. And it kind of goes uh, goes against the people that say, oh, Cap's a self-fulfilling prophecy, because it has uh, it has been stronger than, than we thought. Yeah, I bet that felt good. Um, what about the uh, what about that strength, Darren? Where where is that strength in the market? You've, uh, uh, we'll come on to the fuel types in the moment. I mean, just just talk to me about where the pockets are, are of strength are. It's um it's definitely that cheaper car. So under fifteen grand is is um, so, certainly sort of talked about as a as a um as as good value vehicles and and they they're ones that they're prepared to stock um and will sell quickly. So the strength in the in the sectors that we that we have are city cars, super minis um lower medium cars so um super minis are the one that stand out they've gone up by 1.1 percent so there's definitely some strength there at a couple hundred pounds so yeah that's um 
that 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 sort of cheaper end is is going really well. SUVs, where most of the volume is now, more or less level, uh, particularly if you take out electric vehicles. So petrol and diesel um, SUVs have, have performed okay, fairly level. As I say, small drops at the start of the year, and then some some reversing there. So uh, definitely always in the detail, and there's there's um plenty of cars that have gone up and plenty of cars that have gone down but but overall it is a strong market and yeah a stable market yeah auto trader told us much the same that those those different price points is is it really the devil is in the detail when you look at look at the market at the moment um and and in terms of those those different fuel types you've mentioned that petrol and diesel have been pretty strong let's just talk about what what's what sort of numbers we're looking at there yeah so diesel's gone up by 0.2 percent at three years um, and petrol's level. Um, so um, yeah, most of the cars that are within our data are petrol, obviously. Ele electric vehicles are, are a growing, uh, a growing sector, but it's still mainly petrol. Diesel is declining, but petrol and diesel cars, they've behaved very similarly to each other over, with their value moves over the last two or three years, really. And it's just as demand for diesel uh, decreases, the supplies are decreasing as well. So, so they are, um, they're, they're maintaining still quite strong. They're around sort of 15, 16% ahead of where they were. Um, at the start of 2021 still so uh, yeah still still some uh, still some uh, reasonably priced cars but still more expensive and I guess we've had a lot of inflation in that time anyway in the in the in the UK so um, but yeah it, it is the electric vehicles that are they continue to be that sort of volatile really mixed picture what's happening there then Darren what with, with electric vehicles I mean have, have they dragged the numbers down yeah so there's a 1.8 percent drop uh, for electric vehicles, uh, a 1.8% drop as well for PHEVs. So those two fuel types have uh, have definitely dropped the um, the averages down. Um, so, but yeah, there's there's cars like the Zoe, um, the Leaf that have stayed level. Um, so they yeah they've done okay. There's there's others that have um, that have dropped. Like so, I think the the Audi. Um, uh, let me have a quick look. The Audi um, Q4 e-tron has dropped by four percent. Citroen C4X has dropped by 4%. Um, we've seen some weakness on the Aura Funky Cat, which is obviously fairly new to the market. We've seen some strong new car deals on that one. So they've sort of dropped. So we've got some 4, 5, 6% drops. You've got Then you've got some sort of level. Um, and then you've got a few that have gone up as well. Um, everyone talks about Tesla all the time, obviously. Tesla Model Y, we're starting to see some weakness there again uh, as more volume comes back. And that's obviously where Tesla is focusing their new car registrations on now. But Model 3 has only dropped negligibly and, and they look really good value. And you speak to dealers and they, they want to stock um, the, the, the Tesla. We've seen more vehicles sold this January, um, sort of double the number we saw last January for EVs. But um, they're at a price. Obviously, they're a lot cheaper than they were a year ago. And it's probably still not enough to mop up all those volumes that are coming back from uh, from all the registrations over the last three or four years. We've been monitoring prices very closely as part of our AI car dealership projects. And um, I, the cars that we've got advertised at retail price, is, uh, Auto Trader gives you a daily daily update on where, they, where they're moving, plus or minus. They are, the retail prices are moving very, very slowly. The prices that Auto Trader says we should be advertising those cars are. There, there was this sort of disparity, wasn't there, between the the trade prices and the retail prices, and Auto Trader highlighted that. Are you seeing that 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 gap closing a little bit? Are they coming more into line? Yeah, they're definitely closing. But yeah, there was a disparity, absolutely no no doubt about it. Trade values came down very sharply. Retail values didn't. Um, and I know Auto Trader are, are telling everybody to to sort of hold on price, which is obviously a, a a, a good thing to do as long as the cars are selling. So obviously those um, those, those prices are advertised prices. And we've, again, we've seen some of those being reduced, but um, I think the dealers should be holding their nerve to a, to a certain degree on them. But from speaking to them, if they've had, if they've got cars that are in stock from sort of October, November time, they probably need to be getting those gone. And, that, and that's the cars that are kind of reducing. But as trade stabilizes and some um, retail values do come down to a degree, then yeah, that um, they are uh, definitely coming more in line. But it was quite unusual, the speed and the, the severity of the trade drops in, with regards to and retail not doing it. But there generally is a lag between trade and retail. Trade values do come down first retail does follow but certainly there's no way that retail is going to follow to the extent that trade went and we were saying that at the time that christmas will come at a good time um, and then we come back into a buoyant market and hopefully then um, dealers can maintain their pricing or certainly not drop them by as much 
Of course, if they bought them at cheap prices in December, there are some that will be advertising them cheaper and just sticking a margin on them and and, um, and going from there. But also, if they bought them in December and, and they price them high, they can make some reasonable money on those. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah. those ones that bought in December are, are sitting pretty at the moment. Yeah, interesting on that front. And um, just your thoughts on EVs going forward into this year. Um, manufacturers are really going to have to push these the, these new EVs, aren't they, to, to hit these 22% targets. Do you think the activity that they might have to do there in the new car market will impact EV prices further? You have to sort of ask the question, why would you buy a used EV when the new car deals are going to be so good and are so good? We've seen 30% off um, on some, some new EVs, thousands of pounds, 10 to 15,000 pounds off really attractive monthly payments, really attractive interest rates. The, I, I feel for the manufacturers, they've got a tough job this year. They've got to hit the, those targets or or mitigate them or so, somehow by pushing it down the roads into the next few years and overachieve then or buy credits off other um, other brands that are, that are mainly EV. So it's going to be tough for them. I think um, they will be sending a lot of cars into the fleet and leasing arena. There'll be some very keen fleet deals and leasing deals. Um, rental companies if they want them um it doesn't it's not a natural fit for most rental companies but again they can probably have a, have a number of uh, electric vehicles if they want them so will prices be affected i can't really say on evs in general because they're all over the place you've got cars like a mocha where the ev is five grand below the ice equivalent the petrol equivalent you've got others where they're still more expensive you've got some where there's parity so Within our forecast, there's lots of different um, EVs moving in different directions, but I, I think it's going to be tricky for EVs this year. It's going to be it's challenging to hit those those ZEV mandate targets, and that obviously will reflect in in the used car market as well. And obviously, for every new car buyer of an EV, it's got to be a used car buyer, however far down the road that is. So it is really important that we get some some traction in the in the used car market by more. They're, are, the people are buying them. There's no no doubt about that but it needs to be more. Mm, interesting. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens there. And just, just finally, Darren, what's going to happen next? I mean, we've seen a 0.1% drop, as you, you explained in January. What are we going to see in the next few months? So, well, I, I think it might be quite similar to last year. Last year, uh, values went up in, in February. They went up by about a percent. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened again. They then went up again in March by about half a percent. So negligible movements. We're not having another 2021. We're not going to see all, all that again. Um, and we'd, I don't think we're going to see a, a sharp decline like we saw at the back end of last year. So I think there could be some small movements up. There's no reason to believe that the market isn't going to stay strong, that consumers are going to continue to buy, especially if we see interest rate drops and things like that. So I think we're in for a, a reasonable couple of months. After that, you've got Easter right at the end of March can be a bit of a watershed. If it's a heavy March for registrations, lots of incentivizing, could be a lot of volume coming in in April and then the market might start to weaken as you hit holiday periods, bank holidays, that type of thing. But I think for the time being, certainly say it's a, it's going to be positive. Um, no reason to expect otherwise. Interesting stuff, Darren, as, as usual. I'm looking forward to catching up with you each month as we go forward throughout the year. And thanks so much for giving up your time today. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Cheers, James. Nice to see you. That's Darren Martin from Cap HPI. Now, for more videos like this one, you can visit our website. It's cardealermagazine.co.uk, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Cardealermagazine. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.